In 4-6, you're going to learn how to complete the square. And let's just make sure that we're clear on why you would complete the square. You're going to complete the square if you cannot factor. All right, now we're going to practice some that are very easy. And when I say very easy, what I'm trying to tell you is we are going to practice some that could factor, but just so you get used to completing the square, um, we're going to try some easier ones, and then we'll talk about difficult ones where you would absolutely have to use completing the square. Let's try this on problem one. Now, I have different levels throughout this lesson. Problem one is what I call a, a level one problem because there's no x terms. When you, no regular x term. There's an x squared, but there's no regular x term. When you get to your homework, please make sure that you reference what section you should reference in your notes to be able to do the work in class. This is what to do if there's no regular x term. Look at 4x squared plus 10. You ready? All we're going to do is isolate x squared. So we'll minus 10, minus 10, 4x squared equals 36, divide by 4x squared equals 9. Not so bad, right? To undo an x squared, you learned in Algebra 1, you take the square root of both sides. That's going to give you an x over here, and just be careful. It's asking you what could you square to get a 9? You could square a positive and a negative 3. So you have two answers, a plus and a minus 3. Not too bad, is it? Let's try it again on problem B. Isolate x squared. If you want to write that step down, pause the video and write it. I, and I would write it right up here. Isolate x squared. Add 5, everybody, so you get 30. Divide by 3, you get 10. You should notice 10 is not a perfect square root, so when we take the square root, we just get plus and minus the square root of 10, because there is no perfect square root of 10. Move on. Number, or the got it, problem 1 got it. Isolate x squared by adding 10 first and getting 35. Divide by 7, you get 5. Take the square root. You get plus and minus. There is no square root of 5, so you just write square root of 5. The front page isn't too hard, but remember, none of these had an x. Problem 2 will be a little more difficult. While designing a house, an architect used windows like the one shown here. Notice the window that's a rectangle with the semicircle on the top. What are the dimensions of the window if it has 2,766 square inches of glass total? All right, guys, well, here we go. You have to be able to first find the area of the rectangle. So write area, rec, for area of rectangle. You know that's length times width. You should know that. Look at the picture. That's going to be 2x times x because that's what it's labeled here and here. That makes 2x squared. Not too bad so far, right? Now we've got to talk about the semicircle. Okay, the area of a semicircle. The area of a, well, the area of a circle is pi r squared, but this is half of a circle, so we write one half out in front of it. Let's fill in the blanks. That's one half pi. Now the radius, take a look at the picture. See the x that I'm pointing at? The radius is half of that which is x divided by 2. The radius is half of this x, therefore x divided by 2. And we need to square that. Pi r squared. All right, this is going to take a little more effort. 1 half pi. x squared is x squared. 2 squared is 4. Look how I'm writing all of this. Now I'm going to make it nice and pretty. I'm going to multiply all my numerators together. Look, I circled all of my numerators for you. That is going to become x squared, pi x squared on the numerator. Now look at the denominators, 2 times 4 is 8. Now, to get the total area of the glass, we're going to take those two things and add them. 2x squared plus pi x squared over 8 equals 2,766. Now we're going to factor out an x squared. You have to remember your factoring rules. If I pull out an x squared, I will be left with 2 plus pi over 8. And that is going to equal 
2,766. All right, you can get a decimal for this if you want to at this moment. All right, to get a decimal, I'll do 2 plus pi. Look how I'm getting pi. Second, the arrow button. 2, pi, two plus pi over 8. Let's make it 2.39, everybody. 2.39. So that is 2.39x squared equals 2766. Isolate x squared. Divide by 2.39. Divide by 2.39. X squared equals 2766 divided by 2.39 equals approximately 1157.32. Now this is all approximate because we're rounding. Now we solve by taking the square root. Get your calculator. Ready? Square root. 1157.32. Remember, this is all approximate, so we're just going to make it 34 when we're all done. X is approximately 34 inches. So it says, what are the dimensions of the window? If you want to redraw the window, it might be helpful. This area of the window right here is 2 times what we got, so 68 inches. This area up here is the just regular of what we got because it was just x, 34. Let's do the got it. It's the same type of idea. But this one's just a rectangle. The length of the sides of a rectangular window have the ratio of 1.6 to 1. The area of the window is 2,822.4 inches squared, square inches. What are the window dimensions? Draw it if you really want to be able to do it properly. They said the ratio is a 1.6 to a 1. Well, guys, anytime you do ratios, that just means it's 1.6 times whatever x is and 1 times whatever x is. That came from right there. All right, well, you guys know that it's just length times width. So I'm going to do 1.6x times 1x. That's length times width. That's 1.6x squared. And they told us that the area is 2822.4. Well, now all we have to do, ready, isolate x squared, divide by 1.6, x squared equals, get your calculators, 2822.4, divide by 1.6, I got 1764. Take the square root to get x now. Notice I'm not using plus and minus here, okay? No plus and minus because you're not going to have a negative window because we don't have any windows in a black hole. So let's get our calculator and take the square root of what we just got. The square root of 17, 64, 42. So x is 42, and this is in inches. If you wanted to go ahead and make the window, right here you're going to do 1.6 times 42. Any, so I'm going to take the calculator times 1.6. That means this side is 67.2 inches. And this side up here is just x. So this side is 42 inches. Okay. Let's try what happens if you have a perfect square to begin with. This is what I call a level 2 problem. We are going to solve and the problem is going to look a little different. Look guys, problem 3 I'm changing it, there is an x term. This is different now because there is an x term. All right, let's keep going. Now in problem three, I gave you the answer key. Here are your steps. Take a look at this side. I'm gonna draw little squiggles under it. You see the squiggles? That's what we call a perfect square. Why is that a perfect square? Because look how it factors. This squiggles makes x plus two squared. If you don't believe me, write it again and FOIL it. Notice, so they didn't really change the right side at all. 25 comes down. x squared plus 4x plus 4 becomes x plus 2. All right? If you're wondering how, it's really just the square root here and the square root here. All right? Again, that was from Algebra 1. Let's keep going. Notice now, I'm going to erase all of my marks. After they factor it, they take 
the square roots. That's how we just get x plus 2, and that's how we get plus and minus 5. So because we have plus and minus 5, you take x plus 2 and you set it equal to the positive 5, and you take x plus 2 and you set it equal to the negative 5. From there on out, you just solve. So in this one you do minus 2, x equals 3. On this one you do minus 2, x equals negative 7. Let's try it ourselves. Look here. We have a perfect square on this side. Why is it a perfect square? Well, guys, it did come from Algebra 1, but let me go ahead and explain, all right? Because x squared is made up of x and x, and 49 is made up of 7 and 7. But more than that, 14 is made up of 2, always 2, times 7 and x. That means the perfect square because 2 times those two circles makes 14. All right, let's go ahead and break this thing down. It's going to be squared. I'm going to put x here and 7 here. And the minus sign just doo -doo -doo, drops down. And that equals 25. As long as you're good at factoring, this step's going to be easy for you. Now we're going to take the square root. We're going to lose our squared here. We're just going to have x minus 7 equals square root of 25 is both a plus and a minus 5. Now I have two problems. I have x minus 7 equals a positive 5, and I have x minus 7 equals a negative 5. Add 7 on this one, and I get x equals 12. And add 7 on this one, x equals 2. Okay, so let's make sure you understand this one is different from the front page because we have an x term when we begin with. But this one is a level 2 problem, so not quite as difficult as what we're going to see because it has a perfect square that can factor perfectly.